Yeah, finally. <laughs> oh my God, something is off, completely terrible. Off to a great start. <laughs> huh? Yeah, that's actually we say in Russia, that's first. Uh, anyway, pancake is wrong. Anyway, it's, it's a Russian expression. Sorry for that again, guys. I'm really, really sorry for that. And uh, yeah, let's start again <laughs> with an awesome <laughs> photographer, John Weatherby. Oh, and me, thank you, man. My, my, first, my first ever episode. I hope everything will be okay in the next episode. My first ever episode on five questions with, and I have an awesome photographer is now and in the future as well. And again, John, thank you so much for joining me. And I'm sorry, guys, for, for having the travels. And I think it's my fault because now when we connect, we connected, everything is fine and everything is yeah. fine. Yeah. I, I wasn't on my Wi-Fi when I connected at first. So I don't know. I don't know if that had to do with it. I think my connection wasn't very good. So, but we're all good now. I can see you very, very clean up before, you know, compared to before. And my awesome. wife is shouting me on from, from, from another room and say, when he connected, everything is disconnected. Oh, so maybe, <laughs> or maybe I probably I broke it. It's probably my fault. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for joining. And for those who doesn't know John, let me properly introduce him. He's, John is an awesome landscape travel and commercial photographer. He works with a client such as Uber, and Home Depot, to name a few. He is also running a workshop in New York and Iceland, correct me if I'm wrong, and he's an educator as well. He's an awesome educator as well. His photos actually stand out in my feed so much, and I, you know, I can spot the John's photos oh, right, right away, you. especially, especially, my favorite one is actually um, the, um, the one with the, you know, like uh, Milky Ways and stars, you know, astrophotography. This is actually, I'm so angry. You know, we, in Russian, we have an expression, a white envy. A white envy <laughs> means that it's opposite to black envy. White, white envy, it means like a, a nice envy. You know, if, you, if there is a word like nice in that, yeah. it's like a friendly envy. You know, you're good and I'm good, but I'm envy you. So in that case, I really, <laughs> really envy you in your photos, especially in Milky Way. They all um, great, but especially Milky Way, because I'm living in Moscow. I appreciate I, it. Yeah, 300 miles, 300 kilometers from any black spot. I can't shoot them. Oh. Really, really. And, and they are so much, so, so good. So go and check uh, John's uh, Instagram if you if you don't know him. And, you know, just um, he's an awesome photographer. And I have oh, a question. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, thank, thank you so you. much for joining me again. My head just got this big. <laughs> it should be it should be even that more big you know like i could i could go on and on about your photos as well man i really love your stuff <laughs> thank you so much thank you thank you john so let's start with the five questions i just wanted to you know to tell a little bit about what what is going on there will be five questions for each and every photographer which, which will be invited to my you know like small episodes five questions with and they will be the same but there will be a two two questions hopefully two questions from uh audience from you guys if you want to answer uh sorry if you want to ask john uh, a question i have already one because i already have an announcement before in my instagram stories and i have a very good one from um from a timur x photography and i will ask this question there will be maybe one if nobody else uh answer that uh sorry ask you a question but for that for that matter is uh, okay we have a five five uh, of my own you know predetermined questions and again thank you so much for joining me i'm really yeah <laughs> i'm honored honored to be yeah. your first guest man okay thank you so much uh so let's start right first question how do you came to photography and why do you choose this particular style of shooting editing and technique and what drew you to 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 that i mean basically why not for example i don't know uh, fashion or or commercial oh sorry uh you know car car or, or micro or something like that and why this particular style what's what's due you what, what why <laughs> yeah uh okay so funny story i actually started out uh taking pictures of sushi so mm -hmm. that's how i got into photography i worked at a restaurant while i was in college and the they had me handle their social media so i would take photos of the sushi at the restaurant for the for instagram and facebook and a photographer came in and took photos for the menu. And when I saw the photographer's photos, you know, I saw, I, this was my first time that I was introduced to shallow depth of field and, you know, bokeh from the, from the prime lens. And it just it blew me out of the water. I was just like, oh, like my, <laughs> my photos suck. I gotta, 
set my game up now because <laughs> you know I, I'm aware they could be so much better. So that's how I got into photography, and then you know I slowly branched out and started taking pictures around my city, uh, Tampa, Florida, and I would take photos of the skyline and different you know landmarks in the area, which uh, you know it got it got fun to kind of get creative and then I you know experimented with real estate and headshots and uh, a lot of other different styles but my my first style was cityscape so this is why I'm really attracted to your stuff because I see okay, thanks. <laughs> these amazing you know cityscapes that you post and time blends and stuff like that um, so that was my first like thing that I really enjoyed shooting and that lasted for a while um, but then when I went to Iceland for my first time is when I got introduced to, you know, incredible landscapes. That was like my first landscape focused trip. And that's, you know, when I fell in love with landscapes. So uh, that's the style that I pretty much settled on. And then I think that, you know, the style that I have now is kind of a, a blend of um, stuff that I learned when I was learning how to shoot cityscapes with like time blends and stuff like that. So I really, I really love, you know, creating these like surreal photos, uh, blending, you know, elements from the same scene, you know, moments apart or, you know, compositing other images just to create these like very dramatic, surreal pictures. Absolutely. Absolutely. But can I say that first, you know, you're coming from food photography. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Just a little, Cell phone yeah. pictures. Anyway, cityscape. cityscape. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I did see your cityscape and but it's it's also absolutely fantastic. But again, uh, what draws me, I mean, it's not like everything is not good, but this one is good. No, it's more like what really envy, you know, white envy me is uh, for me is that is that your your lens, uh, your uh, astrophotography is, is amazing. One of the, on, on my screen right now, I tried to do a Facebook um, uh, live, but probably again, failed because of the first <laughs> help. Anyway, wow, probably thank you fault. so much. Yeah, thanks so much for this answer, uh, for that question. So next. Yeah, one. No, no problem. Yeah, and just to reiterate uh, with the landscapes, I think that for me, you know, landscapes, are a little bit more special just because nature is constantly changing you know like it's it's a different result every time so you know whether you know you're photographing a building or food or fashion or something i mean you're creating but you have less control i think with nature right, um, right. so you kind of it's kind of a thrill to kind of chase to see what uh you know what the result you'll get yeah, absolutely, absolutely understand, and I'm 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 feeling you with the Iceland as well because the Iceland was as well my first introduction to landscape, which I you know moved slightly away from, but still you know uh, I, I love city. Uh, now I'm, I'm more in the cityscapes, but still still Iceland is is the is the is probably I think there's many photographers who will say that Iceland changed them in 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 terms yeah. of was from something else to a landscape photographer because it it sounds so cliche but it's so true. Right. Um, a beautiful country. You know, just because there's there's things that I've seen there, um, you know, that just defy logic. You know, it just blows your mind to think about how these things are possible. Absolutely. You know, so especially the Northern Lights. That's yeah. Yeah. I've seen the Northern I mean, Lights many times, but it's still an amazing experience every time. I never see the Northern Lights myself, but I know a great photographer called John Weatherby. You know? <laughs> and he's got a nice picture. But anyway, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I still, you know, I, I never experienced it myself personally. Oh, uh, you got to go back. Yeah, I have to. I have to. It's my, you know, it's going to be first time for the, for the, uh, for the how, Aurora Borealis, right? Is, is yeah. That, yeah. Oh, yeah, just... thanks so much. Thanks so much yeah, for no answering problem. my first question. So let's go for the second one. Um, so uh, what is your current equipment, favorite equipment, which you can't live without right now? Yeah, okay. So I shoot Nikon mirrorless. And I would have to say if I had to pick one piece of equipment, I mean, obviously, the camera is the most important. Yeah. I can't really do a lot without that. But uh I think my favorite piece of equipment is my 14 to 30 millimeter F4 lens wow. from Nikon for the mirrorless because it's it's a super compact lens, but the 14 is super wide yeah. and 30 still, you know, a decent zoom range. Um, it's just so tiny and light, 
but so sharp and it just never leaves my camera you know yeah, so awesome. i think it has to be my favorite that's the first thing that comes to mind okay yeah if you're talking about the set was it going to be the lens and uh... the camera okay yeah. i would we'll say try. nikon z7 with the z7. 14 to 30 millimeter lens yeah yeah because yeah. it's such that's a small cool. light but such a powerful uh combination wow it's fantastic. I, pretty much all my photos from the past year or so you know were taken with that combo i would say i would say like 75 percent. wow no, yeah <laughs> wow that, that's a that's a nice nice really nice you know um zoom range if i say yeah. 14 to 30 yeah i have 12 to oh like 14 to 24 that was nice as well to 28 actually yeah, anyway yeah. Anyway, I, i feel you i feel you very very wrong even i never used i love before. wide angles yeah you know, with, with the wide angle you can just dramatize the foreground so much yeah, yeah. um you know, you can make such a small element like a rock or, you know, a, a, a log or something just appear so dramatic and fill the whole frame with it. Yeah. Uh, you know, to create these really surreal, real surreal looking pictures. So I think, uh, yeah, that would have to be my answer for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Fantastic. I, again, I, I never used the Nikon before so much for a longer time, but I feel it. I feel it. It's a very, it's a, it's a, it should be absolutely fantastic. Are you a Sony shooter? No, Canon. Canon. Okay. 15 years. So are you the, are you into the mirrorless then? Are you, have you um, ventured away from DSLRs am, at I'm, all or? I am, I am transitioning kind of like, from, like that to this. <laughs> yeah. Transitioning to, you know, from, from one DSLR to, to another. Yeah, but I, yeah, I, I did try Canon uh, DSLR and I, and R5 is. Uh, I'm jealous. Yeah. <laughs> Nikon, Nikon's coming with something. I'm sure that's, you know, going <laughs> to be really high megapixel. Yeah, I mean, I have 46 megapixels right now on my camera, oh, wow. but that's still not enough. You know, when it comes to <laughs> the printing wow. and just the detail that you can get, it's like my ego. My ego's just dropped because I have like Puny A5 D Mark IV. <laughs> it's just a small megapixel. But anyway, anyway, who is measuring anything? All right, <laughs> yeah. it's a friendly talk. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. It can go so both ways, first. honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, that was the second second answer to the second question, and the third one: if not photography, then what? Food. That's a that's a very good question. Um, my, I think one of my other strengths, I think, is to connect and network and make connections. Um, so my background is in advertising. That's what I went to school for. So I studied advertising and my original plan was to be like an account manager or something for an ad agency. Uh, but I've always had kind of a creative background. So, you know, that's kind of what steered me towards photography and kind of, uh, you know, tapping into those creative yeah, yeah. You know, sources. But I, I, you know, honestly, the first thing that comes to my mind is music because I, I, I did mm -hmm. a lot of music growing up. So I've always been into music in some way. And Playing or, or, or creating? So I played a few instruments, guitar and piano and stuff when I was growing up, when I was yeah. younger. But the most recent, I made uh, music electronically through like beat machines and software right. and stuff like that. So that, yeah, that that uh, never really kind of developed into anything, but it's still kind of a like a pa side passion that wow. I, could, I could see myself tapping into right. again. So... If not I photography, think, probably music. But still in creative field, right? Music. Yes. And, yeah. Yeah, I not think like, that they transfer. Okay, I will be a, like, I will be a baker or, I don't know, I will be a, a truck driver or something. It's more like in, into creative field, right? Still. In yeah, I think, I think that I, I really believe that people that kind of had that creative brain can apply those skills in different genres and... Um, you know, if they put their focus in it, you know, they can develop it. But like, I've always been into drawing, uh, music, just different creative outlets. So yeah. photography just happened <laughs> to be the one that kind of stuck, yeah. I guess. Yeah, totally understand. But anyway, yeah, that's, that's a, that's a great answer. Yeah. Still in my, in the creative field, still in creative, you know, industry. Super, super good. Thank you so much. And uh, next one. What is your main source of inspiration? Who or what? It could be, you know, a person who could be a, 
Uh, I don't know, a, site, a website or, I don't know, painting or something like that. You know, yeah. general, but, or films or, or music, anyway. So I think that as far as inspiration goes, I, yeah, inspiration is tough because it's, it's kind of hard to feel inspired sometimes, uh, especially when you have restrictions going on with this travel stuff and, um, you know, different challenges that pop up. Like the inspiration is really important, I think, to yeah. move you forward, you know, to, you know, keep you, keep you moving in the right direction. So exactly. I, my, my first thing that I think of when inspiration is purpose. So like, I think that if, you can really tap into a purpose. I think that that keeps you inspired. Like for me personally, I discovered last year that I really like teaching. I really like, I like to educate. So I think that my purpose right now is to um, impact other photographers, right? So like I, I really am focused at the moment on, you know, creating uh, resources that are going to help people improve their photography. Right. So, so that's, I think that's, that's inspired you. You're just, you're in your educational part, right? Yeah, yeah. Because, like, for me, last year, I got really, I felt like kind of like in a lull with social media and photography. Mm -hmm. And I felt like, I felt like, you know, taking the pictures was nice and like posting these pretty pictures was really nice, but there was just no purpose behind it, you know? Like, it was just like very empty and like superficial. So, um, you know, for me, like, I think that there's definitely, it's rewarding to be able to help other people to improve their photography or reach their goals as well. And that's kind of, you know, um, I guess, I don't know, best case scenario, if you can take good pictures and then help other people to do the same thing, right? You know, like, or yeah. pursue their dreams. So that's, that's one part of the inspiration, I think, but I, I definitely get inspiration creatively from a lot of other photographers so starting out, uh, you know, talented photographers such as yourself. Oh, thank you uh, so much. I'm getting, you know, my head is getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually interviewing you next week. So, oh. no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, we can we can make that happen. Yeah, we could, we could, yeah, we could. Six, but, six, six, six questions with Vadim. Oh, no, ten questions. Okay, I will, I will, I will. Be yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I ask the same exact questions and then add my own five. Sure, sure. <laughs> okay. Oh. Um, but photographers, yeah. So Instagram, I see a lot of a lot of photography that inspires me on a daily basis. You know, I see new locations, I see new techniques. Um, you know, I get different ideas, and then you know, can kind of blend these different ideas together to create something new. And I think that uh, one of my biggest inspirations starting off, and I have a feeling, correct me if I'm wrong, but I I feel like maybe Elia Licardi uh, was an inspiration for you at some point or absolutely absolutely okay. yeah yeah absolutely uh and he's going to appear i hopefully hopefully appears on 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 on, on live as well oh really yeah, yeah that's yeah. amazing uh, yeah uh and absolutely yeah he he was i was um i mean uh, i was in a in a in a transitional state when I almost know what to do, because we actually, with the line, we have a very similar background. We work in the film industry, and he's me. I mean, not not not, <laughs> not in the same film industry, but just you know, in the film industry in general. Right. And I, you know, I already know Photoshop, and I, I, you know, kind of almost like almost know, but he pushed, you know, not he personally, but his teaching and his education pushed me so much into that field and and structurize and and give us purpose. You know the the things that that that, that you you talked about the purpose yeah. and, and behind these pictures and absolutely yeah I am so grateful for him and his you know education his speeches and and stuff like that which I saw and and he, you know he he obviously you know pushed me into into that into that field as well. I wish yeah. we could just invite him into the into the chat right. <laughs> I yeah I, you know we have a, we set the date already so that's awesome. Join us, I'm definitely join tuning us. in for that. Yeah join but, us. Uh, yeah so he was one of the first tutorials that I ever purchased oh. um, and the fact that he travels full time and took pictures and didn't have like a permanent home, you know, that was like a huge like eye opener for me because I didn't think something like that was possible. You know, like I had this limited kind of awareness of what's possible when I first started. Um, but seeing other people doing 
the thing that you wish to do is proof and it like increases your belief, right? So like it empowers you to pursue that as well. Um, exactly. So that I think he's one of my big inspirations as far as like travel photography goes. Uh, Peter Lick, you know, when I first started off, that was my goal was to be Peter Lick. You know, <laughs> yeah. I wanted to have the galleries and, you know, just these beautiful, huge prints of my work. And, Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, there's a ton of photographers on Instagram now, you know, social media that are hugely inspiring, you know, that I just look at their work and I'm just like, Psh. <laughs> like I'm just gonna quit right now, you know. <laughs> do you do you ever feel? I mean, I know it's a, it's a sixth question, but still, do you ever feel like you are competing not against one photographer but many photographers and Instagram instead of you know thinking, okay, I I do pretty well myself. No, it's just oh my god, I'm competing with everybody. It's like every, you know, me against the world, me against the internet, yeah. something like that. That's a really good question, and I feel like, and this 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 is. This, this takes, is a bonus, bonus question. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm a firm believer in the in the creative versus the competitive aspect, right? So creative, collaborative um, aspect versus com competitive because what you can achieve with other people is so much greater than what you can do on your own, right? Absolutely. And also, there's enough success to go around, you know? So I think that the potential is so much greater when you, like, tap into that creative uh mindset instead of competitive because your focus is on your own creativity your own goals and like you're not Absolutely. distracted by yeah. you know what's yeah. going on with you know so and so and um i think that that hinders a lot of people and it sucks to see in the industry uh especially with people that i've known personally that get competitive and it's just it sucks you know to yeah. see so, totally that mindset you know so I'm a big, firm believer in collaboration like this right now, uh, cross collaborating, cross, you know, promoting uh, to the audiences and sharing knowledge and all that stuff, man. So yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Um, collaborate instead instead of compete. Yeah, absolutely, that's that should be a goal for every for every, yeah. for every human being. Yeah. Thank you so much again. Thanks so much for answering that question. And of course. Um, I think that's going to be number five. The last one. The bonus is not, you know, it's not counting, okay? About that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I asked John before, uh, and he sent me three of his pictures. And the question was, can you show me three of your personal favorite shots of all time? Which is personal shots. And just briefly say why those are your favorites. So, John sent me a three photos, and I will, I will do share them with you right now. Starting with this one. Nice. That's so cool. Yeah. I, I didn't realize can I, you could can just like you, pop I, the photo up on the screen like that. Can I ask you just one, can you share something? Because I was just wondering, can you share sure. it from your side or, or pictures or is it impossible? Oh, it's just me. Um, I don't see that feature. Okay. Oh, actually, I just realized I could put filters on. That's kind of cool. Um, <laughs> you, can, you can do that. You can do that. <laughs> Uh, no, I don't. I don't see any type of like picture icon or anything. I just see, you know, the ability to flip the camera, the filter, and then to share it. I was right. I was right because I was. I was like ninety nine percent sure that. Sorry, I'm using it as a guinea pig. Sorry. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> I was all good. Ninety nine percent sure that only me can can you know share those those pictures, and I even make those you know like two feet and everything. And uh, unfortunately, yeah, it's uh, and you know I was just asking, can you do that? But unfortunately, it's only the the creator of the life can. Oh, do that's that. okay. Anyway, anyway you can, I'll focus can on the us. explanation. You can you can be in charge of the the slideshow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can switch you off now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyway, anyway, everybody can see this beautiful picture. Where is that, by the way? Uh, tell tell us why is it favorite and where is it? So okay, that's at a lake in Washington, and it's uh, it's it's a special photo for me because so this is Tack Lake Lake. Um, I wouldn't probably openly share that on you know a post or something, but you know <laughs> this is. This is a, a, a nice spot and, uh, you know, if you're tuning in now, check it out if you go visit the area. It's kind of a more local uh, kind of secret spot, so I probably am going to get yelled at by some people. But <laughs> anyways, the, uh, the photo special because of the cloud, right? So, like, me and my buddy, we showed up to take the pictures of the Milky Way 
with the intention of just getting the Milky Way, you know, reflecting over the water with the mountain in the back. And, you know, this cloud was there. So the cloud, at first we see this cloud and we're just like, fuck, you know, sorry. Uh, you know, the, Beep. the, yeah, uh, right. Can you censor that? Yeah. The the cloud was blocking, you know, partially blocking the, the core of the Milky Way. So we're really mad and we're like, oh, this sucks, you know. <laughs> ready to just go home but then we looked at the photos and we realized you know it's a special uh lenticular cloud and it was catching light pollution from the nearby city so it's kind of got this nice orange glow to it and the you know the the cloud looks like a spaceship or some people call it a cosmic cinnamon bun uh, yeah that, that actually looks like you know, a cinnamon bun now i want i want to i want to drink coffee uh, tea sorry after that but yeah right uh, I, I think you are absolutely right. I mean, uh, I, I mean, the 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 Milky Way itself would be absolutely not, you know nice and, and great photos, but with this, it's making it absolutely a hundred times, you know, not better, but you know, special. Yeah, it, it, it's absolutely fantastic photo. Yeah. yeah. So going going back to what I said earlier about you just never know what you're gonna get when it comes to nature photography, right? Like, yeah. Um, you know, you couldn't plan something like this. This is not something that you can, you know, in advance, you know, say, I'm going to go and I'm going to capture this. This is just you just at the right place at the right time. And this happens, you know, so like Absolutely. there's actually uh, there was another photographer, like I mentioned, my buddy, Jesse Brackenberry, mm -hmm. also really, really talented guy. Check him out. Um, he was with me. And then there was a, another guy named Kirk. And then there was another photographer who was photographing this cloud before we even showed up. He was leaving when we got there. So he actually entered his photo into a contest and it won like second place in some contest wow. in Washington, Oregon or Washington. And, you know, people were thinking that it was my photo because they saw my <laughs> picture. And anytime my buddy Jesse posts the picture, you know, people <laughs> tag me and say, oh, this is your photo. <laughs> it's really funny because we were the only people there, you know, like all got this same kind of scene so did he did he have also a milky way or just he leave early and he doesn't have so the the gentleman that i mentioned that entered the contest yeah his photo was a lot different because the cloud kept shifting oh, and changing right. shape right yeah, yeah, so yeah. his his cloud was a lot wider um but he did have the milky way kind of behind it but his foreground was a little different he had some boats in the foreground at the lake so uh, i see i see but anyway, it's it's amazing, amazing photo. Oh, thank you. Uh, and yeah, yeah, congratulations to, to get that one. Uh, can we move to the second one? Yeah, or? for sure. Okay, sure. I think that was the second one. Was this one? I maybe. Anyway, yeah. this could be number three or number four. Yeah. So this was okay. So this was another deal where, just like divine timing. So, you you know we couldn't plan this any differently than it happened. It's just. Uh, we, this is in Iceland, this is in Northern Iceland, yeah. and the rock is very famous. It's, uh, one. are you familiar with the rock? I'm, I've never been there, but I know it's an elephant, uh, elephant, yeah. water, so, or dragon, this looks like a dragon. A drink, dragon. Drinking dragon is one nickname mm -hmm. for it. Um, it's also known as a troll, so the legend is actually about a troll, and it's, it's, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna butcher this, but it's Kritsker, Kritsker. <laughs> oh my god. So I, I know I said it wrong. So sorry to my <laughs> Icelandic funny. friends, but um, so this this is special because this is a, a rare cloud called Nacreous clouds or polar strat polar stratospheric clouds. So they happen oh. in northern regions like uh, Iceland, and they are implemented with holes in the ozone layer. So I don't know. That's not a very positive thing, but no, but this, it looks beautiful. <laughs> it is beautiful, beautiful thing. And I have to ask, can I, can yeah. I just ask you, is this sure. a real color? Or, I mean, I, I mean I'm a photographer, yeah. I know it's, it's a tweaked a little bit to be uh, sure. much more brighter because we shoot in raw and raw is actually, you know, you have to, yeah. you know, process raw. But is this an actual, you know, cloud or is it, you know? Enhanced. Cloud? Yeah. So it's not, it's not. So it's not enhanced. So <laughs> the, the color, the vibrance is increased a little bit but these colors are actually there, they're present. So if you go um, or anybody wants to check it out, look for this photo on my feed and I have some slides, a couple posts, different posts, but one of them has the before picture unprocessed in it, just straight mm -hmm. out of the camera. 
and you can still see the you know the crazy colors and yeah. so it looks like an oil spill or something yeah it is it is that's what i'm going to say it's just an oil i mean this looks like an oil spill and it's but it's fantastic i i never see such you know clouds like that you yeah know, we all see the aurora borealis and and you know the, we are familiar with that but this is like aurora something borealis special on yeah steroid? so steroid? so we actually noticed these clouds at sunset and at sunset, they were a lot different looking. They had more of like orange and, you know, red hues and some green. And we got some photos. And when I realized that this was such a special thing was when I saw a local from Iceland pull over in her car and get out with her camera and start screaming, uh, Pearl Sky, Pearl Sky. So, you know, they have the Northern Lights. Like they see the Northern Lights, uh, you know, every, you know, couple nights in the winter and yeah, the yeah. fall and spring so yeah. when she got out and started screaming you know about the sky <laughs> i was like oh this is something this is something, something different special. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so yeah but it's uh, it's it's a uh, it's bizarre in in a good way and it's yeah. uh, it's something you need you know you you see the pictures of the drinking elephant drinking dragon whenever you call them up quite a few times, but never like this. I mean, it's a one of uh, one of the kind. Again, congratulations on that. You know, amazing, you. amazing, amazing photos. Uh, yeah. yeah. So just just to give you a quick, um, you know, explanation of the picture, the moon is actually rising behind the rock, and that's why the clouds actually uh, lit up, because yeah. I've I've never actually seen night shots of these clouds. And I think that they need some type of light illuminating them to be, you know, to stand out. So I think yeah, yeah, that yeah. the moon rising behind the rock is really what happened to create this perfect, you know, perfect scene. So yeah, it's 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 amazing. It's just uh, unique. Uh, right, right place, right time. Like, yeah, we literally yeah, couldn't uh, even plan it. You know, we just showed up and. Like, <laughs> With, I mean, again, it's, it's it's just amazing. That's why it's probably your you know three of your you know favorite one, and and I, I would be it would be my favorite as well if it was in my portfolio. They but definitely all have a common thread, and that's you know basically right place, right time. Couldn't have planned it, you know, just showed up, and this scene was better than I could have even imagined or yeah. you know hoped for. Absolutely, absolutely. How many times have you you been in in Iceland? To, you know, eleven. Eleven. Oh my god. Eleven. To catch up. I'm working on my dual citizenship <laughs> right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, what, what should be an Icelandic name for you? Did you pick up already? <laughs> no, not yet. Uh, no. <laughs> so, like jokes aside, I'm actually, you know, considering working with the company there, Ice Guide. So mm -hmm. we're, we're we have some some discussions so uh wow. you know fingers Moving. crossed that can happen Moving in the near to? future with the visa or something wow. wow wow you will be appropriate icelandic um that's a hard language yeah, yeah it is it is uh you know you 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 probably see so many jokes and memes about the names of the icelandic you know oh yeah. Volcanoes. yeah oh my god you go from this to this to this to this to this and it's uh yeah it's one of a kind anyway and as well as this picture i mean I, i'm a, i'm genuinely talking I'm, I'm not you know making fun of you it's it's genuinely I, i'm gen genuinely uh, you know liking this picture and it's amazing it's really really Thank amazing you. It's, it is yeah it's it's actually so the like i mentioned look in uh, look in the previous posts about the picture if you can find them and you'll see a, a you know straight out of camera version because people do, they assume it's Photoshop. They assume yeah, that it's yeah. not real. Yeah, absolutely. And... I, I don't blame them. I don't blame them because nobody sees such such a, such a light before, to be honest. Yeah. And it, I, I would also... Yeah. If I wasn't there and I didn't see this right on the back of my camera, I would also scream Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would yeah, be like, yeah, no absolutely. way, that's real, you know? Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's really, really fantastic. Let us move to a number three. three sure. I mean, number, number third. Third, sorry, third picture, and this one is again oh, some unbelievable colors. And I have to ask, yeah. ask again, how much is it real? I mean, how much I, I is guess process? Imagine, yeah, how much is it? Yeah. Process? So this this one is a little bit more processed, and I think I mentioned to you when I shared this with you that I did kind of stretch the photo a little bit to work um, yeah. vertically for the Instagram <laughs> post. So it is a little bit warped looking. 
and the, I mean, the colors that are present are there, right? So like the pink flare is 100% real. It's there, you know, right on the back of the camera. I saw it, you know, with my eyes when it happened. It's just like, you know, just like, oh my God, like this crazy bright flare, right? So <laughs> um, to give you some explanation of the photo, it's two, it's two photos blended. So the first one was an overexposed shot from the flare being so bright that my settings for the, you know, the scene yeah, yeah. overexposed the picture. Okay. So I quickly compensated with a faster shutter speed and lowered the ISO and took a second shot to get this shot for the sky. And what you're seeing is a combination of the sky shot and then the overexposed foreground. Wow. That's, I mean, this is really uh, looking again crazy and crazy <laughs> from first to second to third yeah this is one one you know one this of this one of this one does have some you know some additional kind of vibrance to it so this is okay. this straight out of the camera so for one thing my white balance is a lot warmer and okay. i really like to kind of cool the white balance off when i do astro uh, like milky way and aurora so <laughs> it was a lot warmer so the scene was a lot more like yellow and greenish kind okay. of so some color correction and then some color enhancement but you know really i didn't add colors right like i'm just kind of enhancing the colors that were there so but it's the photo special for me because kirk jafel is this is a bucket list shot for me so kirk jafel was kind of the photo the mountain the destination that really drew me to iceland and then this was my first trip that i got to see the northern lights this is my second oh. visit there Wow. And lucky on the first time. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, the first so the first visit was uh, in July, so summer. So it was really cool to see the con you know see this place with 24 hours of daylight. But my second visit was during the fall in September uh, 2017, and that's when I got to see the Northern Lights Fine. for the first time. But to get you know this incredible show uh, over this iconic mountain and the the kind of the the spot that really sold me on Iceland was like bucket list so that's why yeah. it's kind of special yeah it is it is kind of really really special if i would say if i ask you to choose one of those three to be on number yep. one can you do that or is it just too difficult uh, <laughs> okay so personally for me i would i would have to say that it was the nacreous clouds just because it's it's such a rare occurrence yeah and it's just that much more special because you know the clouds are are just that much more rare than the aurora and then a lenticular cloud and you can't plan for something like that at all right like there's no app that goes off that tells you the aurora is going to be strong yeah. or the, these clouds are going to be strong or something so I that that be. one for me is the most special um for that reason and also because just the way everything just happened you know we showed up right as the moon was rising And we hiked down to the beach, you know, and just got these shots right at the perfect time. And it started raining and, you know, basically got super cloudy right after these shots. And like the whole scene just like disappeared before our eyes. So it was like yeah. crazy, you know, the amount of perfect timing that was involved to get those. So you that was a really long answer. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, no. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. You, you actually have to say thank you so much for the actual girl or boy who's shouting and, and it's Icelandic. Yeah. Know, Icelandic people who is actually pointed you out to, to this. Would you be, if, if there was no person like this, would you, you know, drive away or something like that? No, no. So we no. actually, so to elaborate on that, we actually saw the clouds with our own eyes oh, at first oh. and we, we pulled over and we were photographing them. Um, and if you go to my stories, I have a highlight and it's a little bit far back, but I have a highlight. It's January, okay. um, January 18, I think okay. is the in Iceland, January 18, if you want to look, but I actually have videos of the clouds at, at sunset. So I have, you know, I'm, I'm like taking my phone and I'm like, these are rainbow clouds. <laughs> these are regular clouds. You know, like what the hell is going on? This is, this isn't real, right? Like, yeah. how is this real? So we drove on um, a little bit to find a better composition because we were just photographing these over the side of some random church on the side of the road. And then we found this little lake with washed up uh, like ice, like some cracked ice and stuff on it. So 
and it had the clouds. And that's when we saw the lady pull over and like get outside and start screaming. So. Oh my God. And again, white envy. White envy to you. I mean, I, I white envy you, you know. But anyway, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really great uh, choice of those three pictures. It's, uh, I, would, I would definitely choose them as well if they were, you know, in, in my, you know, in my portfolio. But anyway, all okay. games. Uh, yeah, so much. So, okay. Thank you so much for this five question. But we have, we still have one more to go. You know, okay. Have, what do you mean? One more to go from, uh, from uh, audience, uh, from you guys. Uh, there was Tim, Timur X Photography, I think uh, his name. Maybe I, I maybe by the sound of that, it's maybe a Russian guy, but I, I don't know. How many countries do you or have you visited? And what is your favorite among them? Among them, among them, sorry. I'm okay. Sorry <laughs> yeah, you're, you're good. So the, so this is going to be a very uh, <laughs> underwhelming answer, but I, outside of the US, I visited Norway, Iceland, and the Dominican Republic. Mm, so Norway, I've been to once. Dominican Republic, I went to once to photograph a, like a mansion like a big, like, uh, like a villa for some mm -hmm. um, architectural photos. And then outside of that, I've been to Iceland 11 times. So let me I, guess. Was that? Let me guess. Iceland. Iceland. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. So I keep going back to Iceland, which is a good and a bad thing because it's a good thing because every time the country delivers something different and it's just so unique and diverse that that's why I keep going back. Uh, but it's a bad thing because it's like my comfort zone. It's my go-to and I'm not exploring other stuff because yeah. as you know, I just keep going back. So catch 22. Uh, anyway, anyway, that's, that's a great answer because yeah, you know, I, who, who doesn't love Iceland? Who doesn't love, even if you are visiting, I don't know. Yeah. 10, countries, it's, maybe still it's cliche. Like I said, you know, well, but I, it's I, so I, true. But, but, I, I don't think it's a cliche. I mean, I still love Iceland because I, I, it's not becoming cliche because so many people visiting is the, 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 the place itself, the location is so amazing. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's visited by one person or a million person. I think it's still amazing. I mean, yeah. I mean, anyway, anyway, it's a, there's it's, still it's, so but, much I haven't even seen there, which is you know crazy. I've uh, been 11 times, and there's still so much that I still have to go see. <laughs> I absolutely, I absolutely understand you. I've been only four times and I want to go even more and I, you know, I have plans for two or three, you know, more, you know, more visits with the location which I never visited before. And I yeah. Can't do and, and it was, uh, yeah, it's Iceland. I is, foresee a, a, a joint trip in our future. <laughs> oh, yeah, I would be really, really nice. I mean, it would be fantastic. Uh, I mean, amazing. I'm up to it. Okay, just... You know, tick me, tick oh, ping me, ping me. Yeah. When when you when you get to <laughs> I have the your Iceland. information. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever been to uh, Faroe Island? Where? Faroe, Faroe. Faroe. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Faroe sorry. Islands. No, 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 no. But it's actually, different. it's funny you mention that because somebody I was chatting with somebody earlier and they asked me what's a place that's like high on my list, and I I said the Faroe Islands because. <laughs> It's amazing, and they're currently their their borders are currently closed to ah, yeah. non European travel. I think I believe, but I'll definitely be there soon. It's just okay. I have to go there if if they're close to somebody else. I mean, <laughs> because I'm I'm not European as well. I don't know if they're considering us European. I don't know. I don't know. Technically, I'm not even sure at this point if it's non European that's not allowed. I I know that the U S. unfortunately isn't allowed in Iceland at the moment. Um, but I'm very optimistic and confident that that's going to change soon based off yeah. of information that I have from my contacts there. Oh, so. okay. Me too. Me too. I'm, I'm really, I'm really looking forward because we, we can't, we can't travel anyway. I mean, epidemically speaking, you know, coronavirus speaking, yeah, yeah. we can't travel anyway. Um, Definitely a, a challenging, interesting time right now, but yeah. it's, it's, you know, an opportunity, I think, in a lot of senses too for, other stuff, you know, other creative stuff and yeah. ideas. So absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. I feel it. I feel it. Um, okay, so that was a question from you guys, from the audience, and I try. I will try to see if there is another question, but I think I will miss it for sure. I remember somebody asked you, "Are you drinking coffee?" Well, that's the one. I, I 
I actually have my coffee right here. Okay, that's and I basically okay, that's live. Going to be... I live off of this stuff. So yes, oh, really? the answer is always yes. Okay, that's going to be the question number twenty-five because I think I'm overstepping. <laughs> I say five question with, but I'm really, you know, I wanna, I wanna, I'm, I wanna know, you know, guests so much. So I ask so many questions, more than five. So it's, it should be something like five plus questions with. Uh, or <laughs> you have to change the the title yeah the future video, future yeah models. absolutely five five fish or maybe tennis tennis question with uh, with someone uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, i am really really thrilled to have you as my first guest i was honored to have you and it was Thank so you, much man. fun i hope you have fun as well yeah I hope it wasn't so uh, that was awesome uh, you know, so daunting on you we, we're talking about how, how many if we well we started minus, late so probably yeah, more like 40 15, minutes <laughs> i say 30 minutes but you know i'm really really happy that you you spend more time with with me on on my first and you know it's uh covering up a little bit of uh miss uh, uh miss happening on uh, some issues you make up for it yep. <laughs> yeah <laughs> I want I want to make uh, some tradition on this uh, on this uh, kind of episode to kind of show and invite all of my guests, including you, first starting with you, to vis visit my country. I mean, obviously, I can't <laughs> I, won't, I can't be a sponsor to visit you, but if you ever visiting, you know, going to visit or you want to visit uh, Russia, Moscow, St. Petersburg, Lake Baikal, Kamchatka. Oh. Or any other amazing, amazing places, just be my guest. I will help you any, any, in any way I can. Um, if you ever in Moscow, I can drive you. I have a, I have a car. I have an electric scooter, not here. But nice. Uh, uh, so I will join. Uh, I mean, I will be your guide and 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 your welcome guest, uh, host. Sorry, guest <laughs> host. So I am, you know, I am welcome you <laughs> to visit my country, uh, because I want. I'm taking uh, you up on that. I know that we discussed uh, Lake. How do you say it? Lake yeah, Baikal. Baikal. Yeah, Lake Baikal. Baikal. Unfortunately, that's an incredible place. It is. I have white envy for that. <laughs> especially, especially in winter. But unfortunately, this trip was, you know, canceled because of Corona and, you know, and, and complication and, and stuff like that. But I hope maybe next year, uh, February, April, yeah, something like February, April, February, or February is the best place. To, uh, uh, if best you guys don't to... know about that spot, look it up. Um, yeah. Because it's incredible. There's crazy ice cracks in this lake with these formations and I think they have like ice caves and stuff as well, right? Yes, 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 yes. They do have an ice caves and it's, it's amazing. It's beautiful. And it's because it's a, it's a pure water. I mean, drinkable water lake, you know, when you can drink water from, yeah. uh, it's in the biggest in the world, I think. And because of that, you can see the crowd, you know, those white cracks, you know, on the blue eyes, just through, you know, everywhere, uh, you know, yeah. down to the, to the bottom. And Daniel, uh, Daniel Corden, has some incredible photos from there. Yeah, absolutely. That's the first time I ever saw that lake was his photos. It's like incredible. By so, the way, yeah. you you know he's he's Russian. He's Russian. Yeah, right? yeah. Okay. Even even his name is uh, Daniel. 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 His Daniel. last name is like something different. Cord <laughs> it's longer than Corden, isn't it? It's like a different name, right? Yeah, it, it is different. On and Facebook, have... it's like crazy long. I yeah, it is. <laughs> I think he, he shortened this because of the you know misconception i mean i mean sorry uh because of the foreign pronunciation his name. yeah pronunciation yes. my name is also very very long like sherbakov which is why i would <laughs> I, I i would should i should change it for something shorter like she <laughs> or something i don't know <laughs> but in she or whatever but um, sheep i like it yeah but in she it's, 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 it looks like chinese something uh like a but in she <laughs> uh, anyway, awesome. again, I am thrilled to have you, and uh, thank you so oh, thank so you. much. And again, I invite you to visit my country; it's beautiful as well. And uh, again, I will be your your host as much as I could. If you ever visit it, if you have any pro, uh, tr you know, like a you know visa invitation or you know where to stay and stuff like that. And again, I hope one day we will meet on the Lake Baikal and show yes. amazing rock rocks and and, let's, and let's speak and, it into existence yeah yeah next yeah. year i am absolutely sure of it yeah we will we will and thank you so much john and thank yeah, you guys course. for joining it's my pleasure yeah 
Thank you. Uh, again, uh, thanks everybody for joining me. And let's, I hope you like, uh, sorry for, for your issues and my English, but you know, John is, is, is amazing English. Uh, amazing oh, no, you, 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 know. you, did, you did awesome, man. Okay. <laughs> thanks so much. And wait for the next in, uh, announcement for the next speaker. And uh, we'll have uh, more amazing guys like John in, in the future in my episodes. Thank you so I'll much. I'll be turning in. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, John. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Take care, guys. Bye. Take care, Bye. Bye.